Hello guys, and welcome back to another glorious day of mining and crafting. I'm here with Riptide. Hello. Hello, hello. So, Riptide is slightly sick and joining me, and uh, to clear up something from a previous episode. So, at the time when I said Psychotic was my community manager, she was. Uh, now Riptide has to die. Uh, yeah. No problem, Psychotic just had some real life stuff going on, he needs to step back. Uh, but Riptide's mm. doing it now, and he does a pretty good job. So yeah. Well, thank you. Well, if you didn't do a good job, I'd have fired you by now. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Sky Couch. Sky Couch, you need. So, we've got a couple of plans for today. But first things first, we're going to go do a couple of base tours. And, uh, Riptide, let's just start with yours. Alright. Alright, and here we have Riptide and Char's base. He doesn't have yes. a name for it, so I call it the Ziggurat. Just to frustrate um... him. Yeah, it's not a cigarette. That was the Mesopotamians. Um, this is more inspired by kind of the Aztecs and their architecture style. And I took kind of my own spin on it with the color scheme, um, as well as obviously the futuristic beacons and the campfires on top. But for the most part, Aztec inspired. And it uses a ton of Elder Prismarine, which is not the easiest thing to get. It requires a lot of crafting. I need shorter rockets. It was a lot of crafting, yeah. Yeah, Elder Prismarine's a pain. Uh, you have to yep. find this stuff, and then you have to craft it with normal prism ring to make more of it. There mm -hmm. is There's no good way to farm it. There was a lot of time spent in the garden farm to get all the resources for this. Yeah, I'd imagine. Uh, so now... But yeah, we can, we can head inside. The entrances are on the second floor. Up here, we've got Omega statues, some relics, um, just some kind of miscellaneous stuff that my villagers, all that good stuff. Um, over here is my favorite section of the base. I call it the trophy hall, um, for obvious reasons. Yes, this man has won the raffle three times. <laughs> yeah, I got, got it before. We can do a run later. Um, we also have our Omegas. We got Char over there, um, Obama behind us, and then I'm over there. Um, yeah, this is Burb. He's my bird. I love Burb. I love him. Heading down these uh, not precarious staircases at all. We have our main storage, which is a pretty pipes terminal, uh, powered by a pipe pressurizer, um, and then basically just a bunch of storage. We've got some docks for tanks, uh, some vault altars, anvil, relics, boss crates, all that good stuff. And in short, this and, place is very optimized. Yeah, it, it's meant to be where you can stand here and you can basically access anything you need from um, the center point. As well as that, we've got by all the, way, the extra vault gear and, to and sure idols. Don't name these. Oh yeah, they are not named. Yeah, I was gonna say, make sure you don't name these. These things are what no. was causing our truck corruption last season. <laughs> yep. Finally found that one. Yeah. Out. So this is where I keep all my extra vault gear, um, some other stuff, traders, little furnace array just for small something tasks, as well as my mailbox for the um, my mailbox for the knowledge store supplies that get sent to me. Yes, uh, and just a little bit of information. Since we do have global mod unlocks, all the Knowledge Star supplies get sent to, well, one person, and up until recently was me, but I've since passed on that to Riptide, as I'm back and forth from the server. So he handles mm. all of the mod unlocks for us, so as you can see, you know, packages get sent in. Yep. And there. then there's a little little setup where whenever I get a package, I play some music, um, and that way I know I've gotten a package. Yep. Um, here. You want to show them? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I pulled out the boxes. Let me grab the controller instead. All right. So now you guys will actually be able to see. Let me make sure I have my note blocks. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, so basically, you have the package, put some stuff in it. Like so. And then you put a stamp on it. We put our location in, which in this case is a locker, locker 128. Right click with the package controller. And the endyman comes and to fix it up. Yeah. And then I can hear this. I can come up to the front, I can grab the package out of the box, and press the button to turn off the note blocks. That causes a lot of frame lag. Wow. Yep. That's why I have the reset button. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. Um, you, know, you really know when you got mail, because as soon as you get close, before the sound probably renders, you've got frame lag. Yep. Except one way to know you have mail. Mm-hmm, it sure is a decent way. Screams louder than AOL. <laughs> yep. 
Um, okay, yeah. And then oh, over here, I've got my Eternals. Um, nothing crazy over here. Uh, I, do we got some, of, I do approve of this, by the way. Yes. The NXO4 um, cubic meter dock and Omega. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just a little quick Pam's Harvest Craft setup for our food. Can mass produce my food of choice, the Plowman's Lunch. Yeah, I need to make some more of these drawers for uh, this thing. And oh, it's so like, handy. Yeah, this is how much stuff this gives. 16 uh, hunger and 38 saturation. Which is it's um, amazing, especially when you get more, hunger bolts. Yeah, a little bit more than my grilled cheese from Vegemite Toast. Yeah, they're great. Both actually end up achieving the same exact same effect because they both max out both bars. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really, it's just a matter of preference at that point. Yep. So, you like um, Bob's lunches? I like grilled cheese, Vegemite Toast. Yep. Not a Vegemite thing myself, but I can't believe it. I've tried it once. It's not that bad. Should probably try to do more. And then you got the uh is that decoration. Uh it is apple cider. Apple cider. You dog. I don't, I don't drink. Anyway. Okay. Uh all the obsidian barrels you're seeing is the storage for the storage system. And the buttons are which ones were full a couple days ago and I checked to see how many I had left if I needed to expand. Um, and basically all of these are just connected via pretty pipes to that crafting terminal, and so I can pull items from them from the terminal. Yep. That does explain Same deal over here. Yeah. Uh, we got some villagers here just for some quick trading. Uh, mostly for apples and cake. And then also I've got all my uh, ancient tomes from pork over here and my bed. And these are just, uh, do you take it? Oh, apparently so. Oops. Yeah, you thought I wouldn't see that one? Oh, actually, I was trying to shift click in and add my, uh, pickaxe in here. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much all of, uh, this part of the base. I guess I can show you the basement, it's nothing too special. I didn't even know there was a basement. It's, it's just oh. a it. I was wondering, I actually kind of wondered where these were. Yep, yeah, this is just for free to access. That's really all that there is with this uh, with space. Okay, now we go on to the next thing. Actually, there is some other things I can show you here, like my cheese machine. Oh, yeah. I this was actually talking about the... that on a stream Saturday, and I, I think I said that I was literally going to put this in this video, so... Mm -hmm. This is something um, Orin and I developed last season. Yep. I had the idea, and then Orin helped me polish it, um, and it works great. Basically what it is, it's a system using dimensional chests that lets us take uh, items from inside the vault and transfer them to the overworld um, while inside the vault. Yeah, I do want to throw so, in, this is actually the first generation that you're using right now. Our, yeah, this, I built this before we had access to some mods, um, so you can make it a bit smaller. Yeah, Create makes this section drastically smaller um, and also removes all of this using redstone links. Uh, mm -hmm. So eventually, I imagine you're probably going to switch that around. Yeah, when I, I mean, I'll probably move this at some point, um, but upgrade it. Do you want to give them an example of how this functions? Yeah, sure. Let me grab some dummy items. Um, and then the so I don't have it, part of it. I don't have it completely set up yet, Here's but basically, oh, I, I got a full inventory. Thank okay. you. Um, so if you take a look at the dimensional chest, uh, I use my dimensional tablet, and I just put all the items into it empty my inventory and they get pulled out and then I only have one thing set up right now but there is a little bit of filtering for easy looting later they all get pulled out and then if I put a key item in which in this case is my food that food will come out and trigger the system and send in resources that I might need so inside of these I've got like I got place done so you can see that's like one of the things I have oh there you go Yep, and then you can it triggers see all kinds of stuff in there. Sorts it back into the barrel for him. Yep. Where, so yeah. anything I could possibly need in the vault, I can put in this barrel, put in one of my food items, and then it will send them to me. And this just simply uses a filter. Yep. Um, and then the other important aspect of it is a chunk loader. Um, this is just a simple vanilla design that is broken right now because it can get stuck on a minecart. Um, it's not 100% <laughs> um, reliable, as obviously demonstrated but it's very reliable most of the time yeah mine's been I, running for like a, for almost a week now and yeah it's not broken yet i mean yeah, that I also has spikes this on a mine. tiny bit yeah 
You can add a turtle egg and some spikes so that any Pikmin that spawn just come out of the portal and don't have a chance to land in the minecart. Pretty much. Yeah, other than that, um, there's this big storage wall for all the loot I pull out of vaults. Um, some of it gets sorted, some of it doesn't. There's also a lot of stuff. Why do you here, have like this much kelp? Um, oh, I was working on the Crystal Crafter. That's right, and that's actually where we're headed next. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically just goes in there. Some of the stuff is sorted, some of it isn't. I can pull it out later. I was Anything wondering I what you were keep. doing with all this kelp when you started yeah. destroying it. Anything I want to keep, I can put in this chest and it gets taken to my storage system. And anything I want to get rid of goes in that barrel and go trash can. Later, this will be automated um, with a flick of a lever, but I don't have that set up right now. Yep. I think our resources are what's keeping us from automating a lot of our stuff like this, too. All right, mm -hmm. so this has been Riptide Space. And next up, yeah. we are off to the Crystal the, the Crypto Craft, the Crystal Crafter. There we go. Mm-hmm. We can... All right, and here we have the Crystal Crafter with all of its individual chunk loaders. Yep, uh, we've set up a chunk loading grid over here so that we can have this running uh, when nobody's here. And it also helps with some protection for things with flying machines so they don't break when somebody leaves. Yeah, that's the world's worst thing about, uh, or the worst thing about flying machine farms. If you unload yeah. the chunks at the wrong time, it breaks them badly. Mm-hmm. And that's why we have these which are all handily controlled from this control panel. Um, so I can turn on whichever ones I want. There's four of them, turn them all on. And this just uses redstone links from create um, to transmit the signal to them. Yep. This is the same chunk loader I have on my base, just slightly modified to make them a little more reliable. In short, piglin proof. Yes. Um, but yeah, we can turn them on and off. And then this is also the controls for other farms. So right now we have a cobble farm. There's the crop farm, which I'll show in a bit. We have an ice farm, a packed ice farm. And then there's a couple other things you can make here that um, aren't automated yet. Uh, let's show the cobble farm first. Yeah, so that's down here. It's uh, designed by Yellow Mango, with the only modification really being um, using just a custom item collection, which is really simple. Just spawns in uh, four layers of stone, and then pushes them over, pulls them off with TNT, items fall down, and go into the drawer. And... Makes, I believe, around... 30 to 45,000 cobble an hour, I can't remember. But it's more than we would ever need. Pretty much. And you can also pair up a salt farm with this very same thing, using only the that one TNT duper, yeah. can't you? Yeah, you can, I believe you can actually hook up three of these modules together, maybe only two. You can definitely mirror it. Uh, you could probably make it work with a third on the opposite side of the redstone. Yeah, it's always possible. Mm-hmm. All right. so yeah, that's our cobble farm, and that is absolutely fundamental to so many things we farm here. Pretty much, yeah. All right, and um, I guess we show the ice farm and packed ice farm. Yeah, so these, uh, we'll go over to the create setup. We'll start with both of them on, and I can come back over. Um, I need to turn the generator on. Normally the generator would be running all the time, but I've just had it off since it is a little bit loud. And that's why I wear these little uh, ear defenders. It uh, mutes all those sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the way this works is we have some of these small water freezers over here uh, from engineers to core. There's 10 of them. They get powered from the power grid and then water gets pumped in from the ocean underneath us. They make ice every like 30 seconds, 20 seconds. I'm not exactly sure. They make ice um, and then we use bulk washing from Create to wash them into uh, packed ice. And so the reason we have two washing setups here is so that we can control whether we want packed ice or regular ice. So if we want regular ice, we just turn off this uh, encase fan underneath Oren. And that will mean that they don't get washed quite enough to become packed ice and we can collect regular ice. But if we do want packed ice, it stays on and then they get washed and turned into packed ice. Um, there's also some other things we can do here. We can turn cobblestone into gravel, and then we can turn gravel into sand. Um, as well as that, we can turn sand into clay. So this is not only renewable cobble, or co renewable cobble from our other farm, but it's renewable gravel and renewable sand. And as well as that, if we put prismarine crystals in here, it'll make quartz. And with that, and the cobble, we can make granite, andesite, and diorite, all from these two farms. It's incredible. Yeah, and that's the craziness of what you kind of got to do with Vault Hunters. 
Yeah. Uh, we run everything on like the trivial setting for Vault Crystal difficulty, and I think some of us are already getting still absurd. Uh, yeah, stuff I'm. For ours. I'm getting some pretty absurd, absurd ones. I'm in. It was bad last season. Oh my uh, god, it was so bad. Yeah, last season we were on standard, and it was just so bad. But before we even really reached 100 crystals, we were all seeing like five and 6,000 items. And with how much yeah, we're on, we just, we just decided to crank it all the way down this time. Because mm -hmm. it was just, it got stupid really fast last season. Yeah. And it doesn't make the vaults any easier, it just makes getting into the vaults easier. Yeah, pretty much. It just reduces the cost of the crystals themselves. Mm -hmm. And as you can really see, that's generally kind of all that's going on here um there is one other so thing far. that um, yeah. well and this is the newest thing well okay there's actually like two or three other things um the sand wall oh yes the sand wall indeed uh the sand wall is currently in the process of being built no it's it finished oh okay, you already finished it so yeah, okay the next thing we actually need to do here is we have to get sweepers and um a world eater built underneath the platform which is going to be fun some, with some of the stuff you have set up. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to take Basically, some of the stuff Basically, the goal is to make this. The goal is to make this a perimeter. Yeah, um, we're going to build 17 by 17 chunks, and we want to take it all the way down to bedrock. Yeah. At some point. And that's for lag efficiency. Uh, one of those few mm -hmm. things where perimeters make sense. This is already a very laggy area, so in order to make it less laggy, like uh, as you can see, there's almost no kelp underneath here. The whole yep. area is lit I up. Almost. Uh, this is to stop random ticks on the kelp, as well as to stop mob spawns, which both increase the lag. Yep, I spent a good two or three hours yesterday going around and removing as much kelp as I could. And obviously I missed a little bit, but for the vast majority, there is no kelp here. Which is why and you that's... also saw all the kelp in my storage machine. Yeah. I, I said I had wondered what you did with all that kelp. Yeah. Um, um, I think that's you, what, your second or third go at removing all the kelp in here? No, that is... It's the only one I've done. I just did it in, like, segments. Okay. I didn't want to spend three hours in a row just punching kelp. Yeah, sounds like fun. While what? you're over there, I can also show you the crop farm, because that yep. is uh, integral to this whole setup. Yeah, and this is what actually creates the stuff to power everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a totem on you? Um, I probably have one in my... Here, I've got two. Oh, I've got one in my... No, I don't have one in my backpack. Uh, totems are highly recommended for this area. Yeah. Mostly because of this death machine that is yeah. encased in a fence and has tons of warning signs. Yeah, um, full prot for notarite armor, well, this, will, this is going to one-tap you. Yeah, um, it's <laughs> absurdly damaging. Yeah, it least. hurts. I've uh, fallen on it a few times. I have died here so many times working on it. I, I, I don't. I've lost count. It's at least a hundred. Yeah, you no, just, it's, it's really bad. You'll like, just be walking along, and then bam, you touch a wire, and you're dead. Yep. And uh, we see um, the death message. Riptide wasn't careful around a live wire many times a day. Many, many times. <laughs> Although it's gotten fewer since I started using totems. True, but then you still somehow kill yourself shortly after popping a totem. Yeah, you know. Uh, totems only last so long and you need to have more. That's why I've got one in each hand right now. <laughs> yeah. I have died on um, these wires a few times. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's uh, go ahead and show how this uh, crop farm and I guess the whole setup here works. Yeah, so we'll start with the crop farm, which is using uh, Create. Basically, it has this big minecart contraption that goes along and harvests all these crops. And then I'll uh, demonstrate the way to speed it up using Twerker. So, just have somebody come down here, and then they sneak, get pushed along by the minecart, or I guess the contraption really, grows all the crops behind them, and then they get pushed over to warp plates at the end, which bring them to the other side, and there's a little bit of visual bug where if you're on a warp plate, it doesn't show you crouching, but you're still crouching. And when it comes back, harvest all the crops, and then these drops are pushed into water streams, um, through item grades from Quark, and basically just go to a collection system. Yep. So that's essentially how this works. It's really simple, works really well, um, and this also farms 
uh, poisonous potatoes for us. And wheat, although we don't have them stored right now. If we come down to the bottom... Turn off Hold on, I gotta... Hold on, I gotta... Over here, it's kind of a rudimentary system, but it works. Um, basically, items go into hoppers, hoppers go into these barrels, pretty pipes, and then goes into the drawers. We have a lot of seeds right now, and potatoes, on nearly 100,000. And that should last us a good amount of time. Um, these seeds and potatoes are used to make biodiesel, and biodiesel is what we power all of the machines with. So heading back up, we can show off the biodiesel setup, being careful to stay above the live wires, or below them. Okay. Yeah. So this is the first section. Um, we have our industrial fermenter, our industrial squeezer, and our refinery. Basically, these turn potatoes into ethanol, seeds into plant oil, and then combine those two and make biodiesel. Which then goes and fills up all of these tanks. Yep, we've got six hundred or six five hundred thousand millibucket tanks, so we can store three million millibuckets of biodiesel, which is plenty. Um, we'll just run the generators for a while. Yeah, pretty much. And then over here is our generator. Uh, this, this is the most dangerous area. Yeah, we get some like... capacitors just for a little bit of extra storage that we, you know, if somebody turns on the arc furnace and the crusher at the same time, it doesn't deplete all of our power instantly. Pretty much. Yep. You can also come out here. We have public arc furnace, crusher, and machine press, or mechanical press. This and the most broken way to get steel. Oh, yeah. You show how that works. This is ridiculous. So basically, with the traders, or the villagers, you can buy steel drill heads for, like, 40 emeralds each. And you can put them in the arc furnace. It gets really loud because the generator turns on. Basically, this just melts them all down into steel. And you can see there's like two and a half stacks of steel just from that. And that was, yeah. what, 10 seconds? 15 seconds? Yeah. Uh, it, it's a really broken way once you have the arc furnace to get tons of steel. Mm hmm. But then again, the arc furnace is also like an end, like oh the end God, game of so immersive. It was 28 perfect wood to die. Yeah, it's really expensive in this one. Yeah. But yes, the, I know this, it was more than that, actually. This be the Crystal it, Crafter. Yeah, it's going to be expanded a ton. Um, the goal is to have a farm for every resource farmable um, for the vault altars. So you can just come here, grab the resources you need, and bam, your altar is filled. You have a crystal. Yep. And eventually, I will probably be adding in a system myself that allows people to just plug their vault altars in and we'll keep this area like constantly chunk loaded. Or at least yep. like a main storage area constantly chunk loaded and um, mm -hmm. basically have everybody have a second altar hooked up to a bunch of me mechanism pipes and that'll allow us to use logistical sorters to actually get the items to fill up the altar automatically yeah one of the nice things about mechanism and um, eventually when we get mechanism qio we can make it where you get access this entirely remotely and you don't even need to come here if you don't want to. Yeah. But that's that's a long way off. Oh yeah. But the big thing with, uh, or well, the interesting thing, I guess, when it gets to Vault Hunters as well as Mechanism, and it's not really something that's very obviously put out there either. Mechanism, or not Mechanism, vault, the Vault Hunters Vault Altar, it actually works based linking to the person who placed it. So not the person who places the crystal. Yeah. So if you take two vault altars, you say you have one at your house and one hooked up to a bunch of storage drawers with a logistical sorter and some pipes for mechanism. You put that crystal on the one at your house. The one at all those drawers, even though it doesn't have a crystal, is still going to detect that recipe and send the items into that altar, which you're then going to see on your end back at your house. Yep. So it ends up allowing you to do it completely wirelessly. And this yeah, was something, insane. yeah, this was something we found out, um, I think it was from a Reddit post. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and we'd found that and uh, we set up, I know I had kind of like my own little one set up, but never actually got like all of the different requirements. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's well, a lot of items you could ever need for it. Oh yeah. And if anybody needs to know um, where to find those, you can actually find those linked on the official Vault Hunters Discord. 
they have yeah, documents there. Yeah, they list all the requirements. It's mostly vanilla items, a couple modded ones, um, but you can get it all without being in a vault, which is great. Yep. Alright, and now I guess we are off to our next thing. Indeed we are. Alright, so with Riptide still here with me, he has issued a quest. I have. Riptide. It's going to be a very fun quest. Yes, we'd um, like to explain. Have you ever heard of the achievement of Fury's Cocktail? Yes. I believe. Yes. So, and that achievement, what does it entail exactly? Doesn't it mean like having like a ton of different um, potion effects? I believe it's every single potion effect. No, that's how There's two of them. Ah, how did we get here? That's the one from I don't remember which one Furious Cocktail is, but there is one. Furious Cocktail is is like less than that, but how do we, how did we get here? Okay. Every potion effect. Well, this is like the Vault Hunters version of that. Except instead of every potion effect, we're going for every positive Vault modifier. All 31 of them. Which yep. means... Should I go through all of them? Let's not do that this time. If you wonder what all of the positive modifiers are for a vault crystal, you can find that at vaulthunters.gg. That's their official website. And it has a whole table with all of the different modifiers on it. You got a speedy, you got extended, you got personal space, you got healing, you got gilded, true, and of course, lucky, journey, easy, anyways. simple, lucky, your resilient, strong, strong, safe zone, silent, super healing, horde, rich, mega strong, optimistic, plentiful, phoenix, super speed, indestructible treasure, exploration, reinforced, endless, super lucky, odyssey, and obvious. And you can put in that short, all on one cop crystal. In short, for pretty much every positive modifier, when it gets to uh, Vault Gem sets and Gilded sets, that is, I believe, a plus six set for that for I each think it's of those. Plus twelve when you stack them. Is do they are they um, cumulative or multiplicative? I think they're multiplicative. We'll have to look into that one. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, either way, it's a yeah, lot. Either way, so we're either going to get 6 or 12 sets of both gems and gilded chests. Um, not to mention, this vault would have literally almost no mobs, zero traps. Mm -hmm. This would literally be vault heaven. It would be vault hollow. It, it would be vault hollow. There we go. On top of that, we're going to be able to eat vault fruits in it once we get that mod. So we could spend an hour in there if we wanted to loot every single room, maybe two hours, three hours, just however much fruit we can bring in. And should we complete matter. this crystal and get enough fruit to last a long time in this vault, this will be a live stream. So absolutely, I think I have come up with a name for our quest. Let's and, hear it. Uh, this will be the quest for Valtala. I like it. So the this is our talent. Crystals. Yes, it is that. This is going to be absurd. Mm-hmm. But once we get there, boy, is it going to be worth it. Especially with the cheese machines, we can loot yep. whatever we want, however much we want. I'm not going to lie, we Doesn't may have matter. to expand yeah. cheese machines to pull this, that, that vault oh, off. Oh, we will. Um, I'm probably, my plan for it is to bring just a bunch of mining drills and literally carve out every single room. Well, not every single room, but like, <laughs> carve out rooms. Yeah, that's probably what I do with dig sites already. Um, that's also one that we probably want to take in. Um, we'll probably plan to take in a bunch of treasure room keys. Mm -hmm. So that way we can pull those out. Like, if we manage to pull off this crystal, it would pretty much set us up for the rest of the season. At least, yeah. Maybe the next season, too. <laughs> All right. Um, so, with that being said, we have something to get this started with. All right, so we find the very thing we have to get this started off with. As soon as I can remember where I put it. We for catalysts, or? Yeah, I've got a catalyst around here somewhere. There, not there. Is not in the furnace. Not in my backpack. Oh, well, well, this is going to be interesting. I don't know where it is. Let me see if I stuck it in my uh, dimensional chest. Where did I put this thing? Here it is. It wasn't my traditional chest. Yep. All right. So the first of our catalysts, Speedy. Speedy, indeed. 
It's actually the first one on the list, so. Do we need to do it in that order? No, okay. but it's the first one on the list, so. So, I've got a co-op crystal here. And this is where we shall place Speedy. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab us this right here. And we shall give this a prominent spot. Let's not put that right there. Um, <laughs> probably not the best spot. Not the best spot. In fact, I think I'm just gonna lock this in the vault. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, with how many modifiers? Just in case we get somebody on the server, because there are new members coming and going. Um, mm. Let's just go ahead and cover ourselves here and uh, put this uh, this crystal in the vault. Yeah, we don't want anybody taking that. Especially as we get to adding more and more uh, modifiers to it. So yep. as we go along, we, uh, well, me, Blackout, as well as Riptide, and I think we have room for one other person to join us on this quest. Yeah, we gotta figure out who. Yeah, Maybe and some kind of competition. So who gets to join? Maybe. But we a will battle, all be putting perhaps. towards basically getting all of these catalysts. That way we can actually make the crystal. And it's not going to be a quick thing. But once we get the crystal and enough vault fruits built up, which I figure by the time we make the crystal, we'll have tons. Theoretically, I could have it done tonight, but, you know, that's if I get perfect rolls. And that's only theoretically if you get perfect rolls. Odds are, there are no perfect rolls. Oh, yeah, no, I'm like, I'll get a couple, well, perfect rules, I just need, like, plus positive. So, I'll get a couple, at least, because I'm probably going to make, like, a stack of catalysts. Well, we'll see where we go from that. I'll be on tonight anyway, so. Yeah, me too. So, we have, uh, seen a base. And, um, well, the other base I want to show off, they're not around right now. So, I guess, continue on to whatever is next. All right, so I want to go ahead and run a crystal that I was going to run on stream Saturday before all the issues occurred, and I kind of lost my momentum. So we made up this crystal, which is Horde, Trapped, and Hunger. So Horde is the middle level of the Gilded set of modifiers. So this one will have a ton of different stuff that we can use. So Trap Chests aren't really a worry for me anymore, and Hunger's not a big deal because of the, the food mod we have on the server. So, I think, like last episode, we're just going to jump into a compilation of the vault runs. And, here we go.
And here we are, in the middle of the night for me and early in the morning for a blackout. We're making something. But we're watching glass get yeeted off into the distance. Goodbye, glass. Hello again, guys, and welcome back to hour two of building a glass doll. Mm, we've been here a while, and we're going to be here even longer. I am currently sitting here camping the uh, schematic cannon while it runs, and Blackout is shoveling glass in to the, well, this dimensional chest. So, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, we're making a thing out of glass, and it's going to take ages. Alrighty, guys. So the dome has been completed. This took about five hours with the schematic cannon. And uh, Red and Spotty here have been here um, helping to fill all of this in and get grass in. In reality, they were serving out their sentence. Do you want to tell the people what you guys did? Maybe crash the server like 20 times. <laughs> it, was our fault. it was completely your fault, and it's the same thing you guys did on Saturday. <laughs> In short, these guys keep posting their... Okay, well, you guys will see in their base tour what they're doing and what... And the thing crashing the server is their schematic cannon. So, um, yeah, let's go to their base tour and then you guys will understand why they keep crashing the server. Alright, so, um... Yeah, we're in their base. I know I've said that there are people on the server who live in the vault, but, um, these guys have kind of taken it to an extreme. <laughs> Would you guys like to show the people what you guys have been working on? They live in the vault, guys. <laughs> These two are freaking mad. Do you guys have elevators for this? Yeah, because we kept falling. Yeah, so the absurdity of all of this. And for you guys not guess, this is an exact replica of the vault, of this very vault room. Um, they are you literally going into the vault, getting schematics of the rooms, and uh, using the schematic cannon to rebuild them. Uh, okay, where, where's the elevator? Yeah, they've started building corridors, and the next room they were planning to do was a mine room. And, um, that continuously... Yeah, and it continues to crash the server. Eh. So yeah, um, like I said, they have taken living, to, living in the vault to an extreme. And this is what we get from this. So, uh, when are you guys making the puzzle room? Yeah, they've kind of had to abandon the mine because uh, it was what was crashing the server. Are you guys gonna like hide random chests through in, in, in these rooms now too? Yes. Yes. Obviously, early. Uh, the schematic kind of won't place the chests uh, itself because you can't the chests. Yep. The, I'm tempted to see if I can actually get them like some kind of way to have chests that look like gilded chests to put around too. So, we'll have to see what we can do about that server side and see if we can't get them some uh, gilded chests in here. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, now you see what I deal with with these two morons. 
Yeah, so you can get bolts that make bulbs and stuff. Okay then. Well, um, yeah. So this this is their base. You guys want to show them any of the non-vault base? And of course, this is the entrance to the vault where their actual vault portal is. I kind of like how you guys did that. Uh, leaving a lot of stuff. Oh, is that even full again? No, it's not full, but I think oh, your minecart might have stopped. Again. Why does somebody always have to make this joke? Always. No, it'll off itself on the sand. <laughs> Squid are stupid. Those are useful. I don't even know that you can actually place these. Got a heck of a view too. Yeah, so by my closest the issues to the aquarium. Well, we actually have the aquarium. Yeah, I suppose. Out of curiosity, how far down is that area? So yeah, this is what these geniuses get up to, and why my server lags sometimes. Wow. All right. Okay. Well, I guess we're gonna get on to the next thing for this episode. Alrighty, guys. So with everything that we've uh, done and all today, this was more of a base tour episode. I wanted to kind of show off all the craziness that people are up to in their bases. So today we saw two of the bases on the server, and as we go along, we're going to try and show a couple more of the bases, but those are like some of the, the two most active bases on the server, and yeah, they're pretty crazy. Um, so, definitely interesting. 
I can't wait to see how this uh, vault one comes up with. And for anyone wondering, yes, I did manage to work out a way for them to get gilded chests for decoration. So we did a little bit of testing real quick and found that the gilded chests just function as a normal chest regardless if you place them down. So they don't have a double variant, but so what I made an agreement with them was for is that they could trade the normal chests one to one for gilded chests for the purpose of decorating their base. Um, we're working out a way for them to have obelisks as decorations, but because those can be placed down in the vault and used to kind of cheese the vault, we're not going to actually give them the item. So what we would do is basically they would pay for the cost of it and then a member of staff will put it down in the place they want. And from there, that's how we're going to go about it. But the cost is currently what all me and all the other staff are trying to decide how to do it. I want to support them in building their vault base. It's really cool. And yeah, I think this would be really interesting. So I'm going to give them a hand with some of the decorative items that are normally inaccessible in survival. Just so they can kind of take it to the next level. And before we go, the thing behind me here, as you see, this is something Blackout's been working on. So as you can see, I'm up there at the top in full nether in netherite armor. Um, Blackout wanted to do a thing where we have the heads of everybody on the server. So we did recently install player heads and more mob heads and uh, for the data packs because it was heavily requested by the different members of the server. So as we've gone, they have went and collected different heads and started adding them on based on basically where they are in the server hierarchy. So for instance, you know, Blackout's here in the gold tier because he's a veteran member as well as my editor. Uh, Red and Splodgy are up here as well because they're very active. Uh, Riptide is on the diamond level because he is my community manager as well as that's where some of the other staff are going to go. And of course we have Iron level here, which is where some of the members are. And then of course me up there is the owner uh, in Netherite. Um, so this was kind of the idea he came up with. I've just kind of been letting him run with it. But guys, I hope you did enjoy today's video. We're getting a little short on time and I'm trying to stop making Blackout have to work so hard to edit these videos in time. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it here for today. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like and a comment. I love seeing you guys down there in the comment section. And as always guys, Please, if you do enjoy the video or find yourself coming back regularly, hit that subscribe button for me. I do appreciate every single one of you. We wouldn't even be where we're at now if it weren't for each and every one of you guys. So I do truly appreciate it. I never thought, like I said, I'd reach 100 subscribers. It's insane. And we're continuously growing. So it's slow rate, but you know, slow and steady wins the race, guys. I'd rather be the turtle than the hare. So it's a tortoise, not a, not a turtle. Either way, same point. Well, actually, no, turtles are faster. But as always, guys, I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.